So how does one get involved with the Spanish Inquisition in the 20th and 21st century? Well, I was a doctoral student looking for a topic. I knew Spanish and was encouraged to go to Israel and discuss the possibility of working on something to do with Spain with the expert in Jerusalem. And I met the scholar who had dealt with Jew, the Jews and crypto-Jews during the period of the Spanish Inquisition, and he liked the idea of having an outsider working with him. He made two suggestions to me, one which was to perhaps deal with the family, which seemed to me way too broad, and another to deal with women, which immediately uh, grabbed me. So I decided that I would learn to read the files and went off to Spain to learn about how the Inquisition dealt with women. Now what you need to know is that we're talking about uh, forced conversions that began in 1391, uh, followed by other, other conversions, some of which were voluntary, but we've got a group of converted Jews for a good hundred years by the time of the expulsion in 1492. The Spanish Inquisition is established in 1481, so that we have 11 years with Jews around during the Spanish Inquisition, but after that, they're on their own. And what does this mean to be on their own? There are no rabbis around, there are no schools around, there are no books around, there's nothing left. So who's going to take care of the J Jewish home? The women. One of the most interesting trials that I read was a trial, was a trial of Beatriz Rodriguez. We're talking about Castile. This woman, because she was a midwife, and midwives were allowed to baptize children, something that only the churchmen wanted to do, she threatened them. So they chased her for many years, a good 30, 40 years, they were after Beatriz. The first time bringing her in because she made some comments while she was taking care of this woman uh, who had menstrual cramps and she was taking care of her and she made comments like the Jews are the apple of God's eye. So someone went and told the Inquisition that she made these comments, she must be a secret Jew. It wasn't enough. The second time she was brought in, another 10 years later, we're talking in the beginning of the 16th century, she's brought in because she had been washing and taking care of this baby before his baptism, and she skipped one of the, uh, one of the steps in the procedure, and the, when the priest found out afterwards, he was furious with her and thought that perhaps she was trying to de-baptize this child, which is one of the things that these crypto-Jews did. They would wash off the baptal uh, chrism, the baptal ointments from the baby when they got home, which of course did nothing, it was psychological. The third time around they got her for observing the Sabbath and, and keeping some of the dietary laws and at the age of 60 she was put in to prison, uh, effectively ending her career as a midwife and keeping her out. With her trial and the files that I, other files that I found, I was able not only to write uh, a dissertation, but to expand upon it and to write a book uh, called Heretics or Daughters of Israel. Of course, the inquisitors considered them to be heretics, and we consider them to be daughters of Israel, the crypto-Jewish women of Castile.